door tap and he'll stop it like he's on air. Tight blue jeans and a buckle that blings with his name, Boot Daddy. Cowboy boots, slip sliding, hard working Boot Daddy. has not got a little shy. There's only one, only one. Daddy. He's a boot scoop, two step and toe tap and he'll stop it. He's a boot scoop, two step and toe tap and he'll stop it. Only one. There's only one PFI, home of Boot Daddy, and I'm not kidding. This is Larry Black, and I want to share with you a new batch of storytelling celebrating family, faith, country life, and the American spirit. It's the real boot life, authentic short stories from across this great land. Made possible by our good friends at PFI, home of Boot Daddy in Springfield, Missouri. See you at the diner. For over 45 years, PFI has been living the boot life. And we know that in every pair of boots, there's a story to tell. So kick back and enjoy the real boot life. You may recognize his voice from the national rodeo circuit. But when he's not on TV, he's running cattle and raising new cowboys down in Oklahoma. Let's get to know Justin McKee. My name is Justin McKee, and I'm from Lenape, Oklahoma. It's on the Cherokee Prairie. We're just on the very east side of the Osage country where we grow a lot of good grass and fatten a lot of good cattle from all over the country right here. So this is, this is cattle country. I guess most people that are watching this might know me from my days on television broadcasting bull ridings or, or rodeo, but uh, my real life is out here on the ranch. Boots are a real important tool for me. They're the first thing I put on in the morning and the last thing that I take off at night. They're an essential tool out here doing what we do. Gotta have a good foundation. Gotta have good footing. I mean, that first step is the most important step, so I make sure my first step is in a good pair of boots. Well, I get up in the morning and uh, put my boots on. And uh, usually I uh, start inside and, and just uh, spend some time with the good Lord, kind of asking him for some direction. I was uh, born into this business. My dad uh, was in the livestock business as a kid growing up and, and his dad before him. And as I go back into history, all sides of my family tree comes from pioneers who came from Virginia or Ohio or Tennessee and eventually came out here and settled a hundred years before I was born. There's nothing better to uh, raise on the ranch than a loving family. I had an opportunity to work side by side and raise our daughter Cassidy along with my wife Jeannie and it's been, been very gratifying. Well, the thing about rural America is it is built on people helping their neighbors. You know, the good book says, love God with all your heart and love your neighbor like yourself. And we still live that way out here. And I've got some good neighbors. I've got some boys that are so hungry to be cowboys. And we've got such a, a wonderful, uh, natural growing ground for cowboys. We have an opportunity here for a guy or a gal to get knocked down, get bucked off, but then we also teach them how to get back up and get back on. There's an opportunity out here to know what dirt tastes like. You eat enough dirt, you're gonna avoid it. We live that out here every day. This is the real boot life. Next, meet a former Walmart exec who loves horsing around. Keep your boots off. You're watching PFI's The Real Boot Life. We'll be right back. At PFI, in every pair of boots we sell, there's a story to tell. Our story begins in Springfield, Missouri, with America's greatest Western store and home of Boot Daddy. For over 40 years, millions of pairs of boots, tack, clothing, and more. We've been helping folks to the real boot life. Next time you're traveling in the heart of this great country, pay us a visit or shop at bootdaddy.com. There's only one PFI, 
Home Boot Daddy, and I'm not kidding. This man has been a top executive at Walmart and now CEO of Outdoor Cap Company. But he'd rather be horsing around on his ranch. Time to meet Jim Hayworth. Even as a small child, I always loved the Western lifestyle. I wanted to be a cowboy. My grandfather put me in boots and put me in cowboy hats when I was a young child. So this Western lifestyle or ranching has been something that we've been involved in. My dad raised cattle, my father, my grandfather had uh, horses. So for me, this is not just for us to enjoy. My wife and I, Kathy, own the Willow Springs Ranch and we enjoy having this here, but it's also about the generations that we've got coming. But I've got seven grandbabies now, and to me, there's nothing that's more fun as to see these young babies come out here and enjoy this beautiful place. I'm Jim Hayworth. Uh, we're standing here in the middle of the Willow Springs Ranch. It's a 900 acre ranch that we raise and train cutting horses. Along with that, we also raise cattle. So it's our little piece of paradise uh, right here in the northeast corner of Oklahoma. Uh, we run a cow-calf operation here where we raise commercial Angus cattle. Uh, do a lot to really try to help promote the beef industry. Along with that, we raise and train cutting horses. Uh, the Willow Springs Ranch has developed a, quite a breeding uh, line at this point in time, and we want to continue to see that grow. As we look at this sport, the National Cutting Horse Association and Cutting Horses, it's the second highest paying equine sport in the nation. I love to ride. I love to get a chance to work a horse, but I also love to see these horses develop into these great athletes and watch them get trained at different stages of their career. Uh, we've got some great horses. We raised a world champion here named Hashtags that has won right at a half a million dollars in prize money. It was only a five-year-old and now retired and going to stud fee and has been booked solid for the last two years. So we've got those kind of bloodlines that we're raising here at the ranch. And as we think about mare power, we believe that here at the, at, at the Willow Springs Ranch. We've got a mare named Dual Raytag. Dual Raytag, in just her first few foals, has produced almost $560,000 in earnings of her foals. So we had a lot of fun showing her in the show pen, but I'm even having more fun watching these babies that we're raising out of her. The real boot life to me means that I'm in a great place that I get to enjoy. When I think about the real boot life, it's ranching. It's about looking at cattle. It's about taking and having fun with great horses. But along with that, it doesn't have to be just necessarily about livestock. It can be about anything that you enjoy in your boots. And so, even as a kid growing up, my grandfather bought me my very first pair of boots, and they'd almost have to spank me to get me to get out of them before I went to bed. I started that way. The real boot life is about having fun in those boots and how much you enjoy it. To me, there's nothing like it. I wouldn't trade it for anything else in the world. Next is a special love story and more. Born in the hills of Tennessee. Every pair of boots has a story to tell. And we'll be right back. There's only one PFI, home of Boot Daddy, and I'm not kidding. Author, songwriter, musician, producer, teacher, storyteller, and most of all, 
father. This very talented man in the hills of Tennessee has a very special story to share. Let's take a listen to Rory Feek. But I'm reminded that what makes great stories great is conflict and difficulties. And it's not just going to be amazing, uh, happy times where all your dreams come true. There are going to be some very difficult times. And the harder and more difficult they are, the better chance of a great story is. So that's really how I see this. You know, God has given us a tremendous story. He's still giving us a special story. I moved to Nashville in 1995 and I came to be a songwriter. And after about three years of being in Nashville, I had my first success and it was a song I wrote called Someone Used to Know and Colin Ray recorded it. And it became a big number one song and that was a big deal for myself and I had two daughters at the time because we were barely getting by for years and years and then all of a sudden we were gonna make some money and I needed to spend some money on something and I bought this. The only thing is, is it didn't look like this at the time. That's 21 years ago and this farm has transformed in so many ways, much like I have. My name is Rory Feek. I live in Hardison Mill, Tennessee, which is about an hour south of Nashville. We have a farm that's 100 acres. I always say, you know, when I bought this house, it needed a lot of work, and the truth is I needed a lot of work at the same time. And so as I started working on the farmhouse, God started working on me, and I was a single father for a long time during that time, and uh, I always longed to be part of a beautiful love story, but I hadn't really been before. I was actually a long, long way from being part of a, of a good love story, and I just wanted a little bit of something good. And somewhere along the way, I met Joey in 2001, and we got married in June of 2002. And even though I had had the farmhouse, what we didn't really have yet was a home, and Joey is what really turned our house into a home. This old house, is a place not just where our story has unfolded, but stories before us have unfolded. And after I'm gone, hopefully there will be some amazing stories continuing to unfold here for my children. About five years after Joey and I were married, another thing happened. She was an aspiring country singer and I was a songwriter. And through a series of events, we got cast on a television show called Can You Duet that was on CMT. And it created a career that neither of us saw coming. So we went from being two separate people doing separate things to being a country music duet. And it not only launched our career that took us all around the world and more than our dreams came true, but it also um, created a lot of things inside of me that I didn't know. Before that, I was a storyteller who really only told stories through songs. But as the years progressed and my wife and I's career kept growing, there became other opportunities. We got to make music videos and I got to figure out how to do that. We got to make television shows and now we've made a documentary, a full length feature film. And, and then in time I've got to write books and tell stories in so many other ways. About 10 years after Joey and I were married, we found out that we were expecting a little one and my wife was very afraid of having a baby. And yet for some reason during that time, she really trusted God completely, even with some of her, her fears that were, like she was afraid of so many things and yet she ultimately decided to have a baby with a midwife right here in the farmhouse in the bedroom. And it was incredible. It was, she went from thinking she knew what life was about to truly understanding what life is about. And it changed her in an instant. Uh, our little girl, Indiana, was born and she was such a gift to us. Um, but then we found out she's an even extra special gift because she had Down syndrome. And uh, my wife never really even gave it another thought and neither have I. She's just a little girl, the same as every other little girl. And she's just a joy and in time, I think that we would understand 
one of the reasons that God brought her into our life. About six weeks after Joey had the baby, just in a routine doctor checkup, they found a spot that they thought was cancer. And she had a surgery and we thought everything would be better. And about a year later, it came back with a vengeance, a stage four. And so we spent about another nine months trying to fight it and hoping that it was gonna work out okay. And ultimately it didn't. Uh, Joey passed away right after Indiana turned two. And we had to somehow figure out how to build a life here without her. And I wouldn't say that was very easy to do. It's still, it's been four and a half years. I'm still finding my way. It's a strange thing to have your wife pass away. So many things that you just didn't see coming. And in a lot of ways, they're very tragic and yet still wake up every day pinching yourself because you're so lucky. And I can only attribute that to God. And I've seen him working. Like I mentioned, all I wanted was a little bit of a good love story. And I tell people quite often, you know, he, he not only gave me that, my cup runneth over in flood. As I look around here, there are so many things that aren't just parts of the farm. They're part of our lives and our story. When I turned 40, Joey got this windmill for me. She had it shipped in from somewhere in Colorado, like a big erector set, and we had to put it together. Our flag was another gift from Joey. It was a Father's Day present for me. I was in the Marine Corps for eight years, long before I ever met Joey. and. Uh, I know firsthand what it's like to serve, and I know how lucky we are to be in America, how lucky I am to be living here and pursuing my dreams. There are a lot of people who don't get that opportunity, and uh, that flag means so much. My wife, Joey, had plans to homeschool our little girl, Indiana, and when that wasn't going to be able to come to be, I had to come up with another plan. And so we built this little one room schoolhouse a couple of years ago, right as Indiana was becoming close to going to kindergarten. And it's been an incredible thing. We have now 15 children from all around the community. And uh, it's not just a schoolhouse, it's also, they have a greenhouse, they have their own gardens, they have chickens. They have a little hobbit house where it's also a canning cellar for the kids. And it's a place where not only do they get to learn the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, but they learn about all things rural. So these children get to learn from cowboys and farmers and all kinds of people that'll probably never have a teaching certificate, but they have so much to teach and so much to offer. When I originally bought the farm in 1999, there was an overgrown cemetery in the back field. Calvin and Sarah Hardison, who built our farmhouse, and some of their children are buried there. And for some reason, one of the first things I did was put a fence around it and protect it and lift it up and revere it for some reason. And then when Joey came into our life, we would find ourselves walking out there all the time, just imagining someday we would be buried out there together. Of course, neither of us had any idea that she would be there as soon as she is. But Joey has a wooden cross out there and my little one and I go out quite often um, every few days and spend some time next to her. On our farm, we have five cows, four pigs, hundreds of chickens, I think we got 19 turkeys right now. But that's not really what we're growing and raising. I've realized we grow love, we grow life and hope above everything else here. On our very first album in 2008, Joey and I recorded a song called Boots. We always love the song. I mean, I don't know how many country singers are gonna 
record a song about a pair of boots, but we did, and we've always loved it. And I've been wanting to figure out how to sing that song on my own. So my buddy Daniel came over and we've worked that song up. Started out just nails and leather, built to last and made for weather. Can't think of nothing better than what I'm wearing on my feet. They make me taller than I really am. Ain't nothing they can't withstand. A symbol of the working man, and old cowboys like me. are made for sawdust floors, stirrups on a quarter horse, to pick you up when you've been a fool, climbing up on bar stools, two stepping under neon lights, ain't too bad in a barroom fight, picking old and swinging doors, that's what So now, even though an incredible story has unfolded here, I'm always excited to see what the next chapter is. At PFI and every pair of boots we sell, there's a story to tell. Our story begins in Springfield, Missouri with America's greatest Western store and home of Boot Daddy. For over 40 years, millions of pairs of boots, tack, clothing, and more. We've been helping folks to the real boot life. Next time you're traveling the heart of this great country, pay us a visit or shop at bootdaddy.com. There's only one BFI, home of Boot Daddy, and I'm not kidding. Share your story about the real boot life at bootdaddy.com.
toe tapping heels, stopping like he's on air. Tight blue jeans and a buckle that blings with his name, Boot Daddy. Cowboy boots, slip sliding, hard working Boot Daddy. This guy, little shy. There's only one only little one. daddy. He's a boot scooter, two stepping, toe tapping, heels stopping. He's a boot scooter, two stepping, toe tapping, heels stopping. Only one. There's only one PFI, home of Boot Daddy, and I'm not kidding.